Hey, I'm Pastor Mike, and thank you so much for taking time to check out this message. And I hope that it inspires you. I hope it pushes you either towards a relationship with Jesus or further along in your relationship with Jesus. But we would never want this message to replace the reality of what it means to be involved with a local church. Although I'm excited that you're checking this out and I, and I hope it speaks to you, let me encourage you that you need to be involved in a local body. There's something to the fact that you need to be under the authority of the spiritual lead of a pastor and involved in a community that can push you uh, further along. We are meant to be in community. So enjoy this message, but let me encourage you to be seeking an opportunity to be involved with a local church. I obviously have Raylan beside me, and, and she's not just here uh, because she's beautiful and makes me look better sitting here, but um, I'm excited to have her. I'm really excited to have uh, this one here. It, it's amazing and kind of fun, you know, like legacy is a cool thing, y'all. You know, you know, when you spend the time and you get to see the kids grow and move up. Uh, Misty Buckner's trying to set up, uh, set up donuts out in the thing. And she's crying the whole time setting up donuts because she's listening to Raylan sing. You know, because we're excited because it's cool. And we're, we're so excited to see the next generation take the torch. Amen? Amen? Which is why we do so much of what we do. And so, but um, I want to talk to you today because one of the things we are finishing up this series, which was called um, Asking for a Friend, where we let you ask questions and then we built teachings off of that. And one of, a lot of them centered around the idea of hearing God's voice. And so I want to talk today about hearing God's voice. And I'm going to let Raylan do a lot of sharing today of, of, of what God has been speaking to her and how that's worked and everything. So you can hear her story. And young people, listen to me. I specifically have Raylan here because of you. Because I want you to hear someone that's not much older than you, just graduated last May, right? Just graduated last May from the villages. And, um, and so I want you to hear her struggle, but also her fulfilling what she feels like God is telling her to do. Uh, I saw this quote from Dallas Willard, and, and, and it's the first thing on the top of your notes there. And then I left a whole bunch of blank because I'm going to let her talk a bunch in a minute. And I thought you might want to jot some things down if God says something while she's sharing. But look at this quote. If God doesn't speak today, then the greatest disservice we could do is to tell people they can have a personal relationship with God. I've said it a million times here. I'm going to say it again this morning. God does not have a speaking problem. We have a hearing problem. Right? God is speaking all the time. His voice is constantly wanting to whisper in your ear and give you guidance. In the scripture that says, I will tell you to the right and to the left. Right? And, and guide what we're doing. And so I want to do that today. Let me test something. All right? I want everybody, we're going to stand up too. Greg, just hold your stuff. Stand up. We're going, to, we're going to try something real quick. I want to run a little test here. Stand up for me if you will. And in just a moment, okay? Now listen to me. Do not cheat. Because you're in church. <laughs> so if you cheat, you're going to go home and have bed bugs. Do you understand? I'm serious. Right? Which is going to be a lot of business for Michael and Stephanie, right? With their pest control business. But listen, don't cheat. Don't think you heard it. I really, in just a moment, I'm going to point at Lizzie. And when I point at Lizzie, she's going to release a sound. And all I want you to do is, if you hear the sound, don't lie. Sit down. That's all I want you to do. Right? If you do not hear the sound, I want you to keep standing to your feet. Do you understand? All right, so I'm going to point to her, and you're going to know that the sound is going, whether you hear it or not. But if you hear it, sit down if you don't stand up. You ready? Don't cheat. Weird, huh? Isn't that weird? Do you notice anything about us standing? 
We're old. If you're standing, you're old. That's just saying that to you right now. All right? All right, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. You didn't hear it either? All right, Raylan's old, right? We may not have had it in the monitors, which is why you might... Listen, 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 listen. What we just released is the sound that they use to get rid of mosquitoes at 17.4 megahertz. Okay? And what happens is somewhere around 20 to 24 years old, we lose the ability to hear that sound. So you just notice, like, the whole group of kids here are like, oh, get what up, right? And, and we're just like, please let me hear it. Please let me hear it. That's, that's amazing, right? He, he heard the sound and took off running. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Amber. I didn't mean to jack him up with the sound, right? But listen, listen, this is so important because I want you to catch something as I let Raylan share her story. So important. There's a verse where Jesus says, come to me as a child, right? You have to come to me as a child. You know why that is? Because children just trust. Like a kid will stand on the other edge of the stage and you'll say jump and they'll just jump, right? There's a, there's a certain amount of trust. But you know what happens the older we get? The more callous we get. The more doubtful we get, the more bad experiences we've had in business, so we have a hard time trusting. The more walls we put up, the more, right? And it's the same way, not only is it physical, but it's spiritual. That we can get to the point where we lose the ability to hear the voice of God. Jen has always said for years, I felt like it was in my high school years that I felt God's voice the most, right? That she really felt like she heard him speaking all. But you know, we get old, old older, <laughs> And things happen, and hurts, and regrets, and struggles. And so I want to talk to the young people today about not losing your ability to hear. And to the older folks, I want to challenge us to go back to a place where we heard. Amen? So I asked Raylan to share a little bit today. Tell us, first of all, um, what is it that God has told you to do? Like, so what's, what, and I've got, this is Raylan's shirt on today, so she can, tell us what God has told you to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so the first thing I feel like God told me to do was get ready. Um, I Just get ready. Just get ready, yeah. Right. I've been preparing for this trip for a year and preparing to know what I'm going to be preparing for for even longer than that. Like, high school is not fun and when people are constantly asking you, what are you going to do? Um, I didn't know. So I've always, <laughs> I didn't know. I felt a full, called a full-time ministry for a very long time. Um, but that's super, super broad. I don't, that's not, I still don't know what that means exactly. Um, so as in, I'm, it's the summer of my junior year and I'm trying to get ready. I don't know, I don't really know what that means. Um, but we were on a retreat, um, my youth group was, we were in, it was Wilderness Week, it was in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, um, and it was basically just, here's your devotional, and they're just, let us go in the woods by ourselves, and hammock or do whatever. Um, so I was hammocking by a stream, and we were going through Exodus, and it was the part where, um, peace. That's right. <laughs> the part where, um, I have the chapter, chapter 16. Um, when God rains manna, bread and manna from heaven, and he tells them, Moses tells the Israelites, don't take any more than you need, and don't take any less, and then eat it all, because he's going to provide each day. Um, and so there were some that took more than they needed and spoiled, or some that took less and were hungry, um, and then there were those who took what they had, took enough, but didn't eat it all and saved it, like conserved it, because they didn't believe that it was going to come the next day. And so I was sitting there and I was kind of like, like, man, like we, how often do we do that today where we take these gifts that God's given us and we, we hoard them, like either we don't use them or we use them in our time. And I was like, I was like, that's good. And God was like, no, Raylan, it's not. I was like, manna spoils. And I was like, okay, I don't, I didn't know what that meant at all. I was freaking out because I felt like I was using all my gifts. Like I was in my youth group, I was playing guitar, I was singing, and I was plugged in in any 
any outlet that I could be, and I didn't, I just didn't understand. And so I started praying, like, show me what to do, show me what to do. Like, if man is spoils and I'm hoarding something, show me what that is, because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want it to spoil. I want to have what you have for me. So I, from that moment on until I got my answer, I was just praying and praying and praying. Show me where you want me to go. And I had my go-to verses of Psalm 27 and show me, like you said to me, seek your face, Lord, your face I do seek. And Psalm 23, one of you're my shepherd, I shall not want. And like, let the peace of God rule my heart. And I was just praying and praying and praying and praying. And finally it's senior year. And I still don't have any clarity other than get ready and you're, you're called to full-time ministry. And I'm looking around and all my classmates are filling out college applications. And I was like, shoot, like what am I going to do? So I'm, I'm praying for college. I'm praying for, for jobs. Just praying for anything to just to give, to provide some clarity because I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to be doing. So, um, it's about September, and I get, I don't know where I am. Um, you were looking at UCF, I know yeah, you I was, told me that. Yeah, I was looking you were going to go to UCF, Because right? Shade goes to UCF. Because Shade's at UCF, your brother. UCF, yeah, UCF, go Knights. I went to my first game last night, it was amazing. Um, <laughs> But I wanted to go. I wanted to go to college. That was my plan of, I want to, I'm going to go get my degree in whatever, because it's, for me, it's free because I got so many scholarships pretty much. And so why not? I don't want to waste it. Hey, wait, it. it's free. Yeah. Yeah. So That's the gift get, you're hoarding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so go to college, get right. my degree and have a good time at UCF. Like, Shades plugged into great ministries there and I was watching him serving. I was like, okay, this is, this is going to be awesome. And there's just no peace. I filled out an application out of boredom in a class and just, ter just terrified of, like, if I need to do it, then I need to do it because deadlines are coming up. And I filled it out, but I didn't pay the application fee because it's $30, and I didn't want to waste money without any peace. So um, eventually, um, I just gave up kind of on that of just, there's still nothing, there's nothing. And so um, I started praying. I got freaked out, so I was like, okay, give me visions, give me dreams, give me, have random people come up to me in the street and tell me what you want me to do, because if you're not talking to me, then have other people talk to me, and, or, or talk to me out loud, punch me in the face, like, make it so obvious that I can't miss it, and so, um, yeah, I prayed for, I want to hear your voice. You I prayed for God like, to punch you in the face. Man, punch me in the face, punch me in the face, show it's me what awesome. I'm supposed I like to do. It. Yeah. Um, Jackie Chan, God, yeah, yeah good. Just, Smack it. Good. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> so I I get a dream. I have people speaking missions over me, and um, God doesn't speak out loud to me, but He speaks very clearly to me one day um, on my way to work. I was just bawling because I didn't want to do it. I wanted to go to UCF. I got I had a dream about YWAM on my base, and it's crazy now seeing pictures of my base, and I was there. Like, and I'm asking, do am I going to get college credit? And they're they're laughing at me. They're going, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I was like, no, no, no. Am I going to get college credit? And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and I was getting so frustrated. So I woke up and I looked online um, at all the deep because they have a huge website and it's this should not have been the first one to pop up, but it was. It was my YWAM's logo. And God was like, that's it, stop looking. Because if you keep looking, you're going to psych yourself out. And I, but I kept looking, because I was like, this one? I was like, in Australia, which is great. I was like, but I've never really even thought about Australia. And why would I need to go? Like, there's Hillsong and everything over there, but um, they're doing a good job. <laughs> uh, and, they already got yeah, singers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know why you're saying and, and then I went and I saw Carol Ward speaking at um, the Father's House, the, one of their missionaries. She's in Africa. And she was just saying all these things that were, that scripture that God had laid on my heart. And it, it was like she was looking at me the entire time, talking to me. I was bawling my eyes out the entire service. And my grandmother came up to me and was like, this is what you're supposed to do. And I was like, no, no, I just want to, I want to go to UCF. I want it to be easy. I did. I wanted it to be easy. And then I was on my way to work. 
Um, and I worked at a daycare. I hated it. I hated it so much. <laughs> so I'm already, I'm already kind of emotional because I don't want to go. I don't want to go to work. And, <laughs> and so I'm praying and I'm praying because I did. And in any spare moment, I was like, show me where you want me. And God was kind of getting a little tired. I, not really, because he doesn't do that. But, but we picture it that way. I picture it. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. shut up. I've right. already told you. Right, right. And so um, I'm in the car, and I just feel this, like, like, overwhelming, like, calm. And then I was frustrated because I didn't want to be calm. I wanted, to be, I wanted him to be just as riled up and confused as I was, but he's not. And... So I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm praying, and he's like, Raylan, in this moment where everybody's taking, telling you to take your life into your own hands, put it in mine, put it in mine. Hmm. And I just started, I was bawling. And I was like, and that, from that moment, it was just, this is it. Like, all right, all right. That's, that's what I felt, pure trust, simple trust in the Lord. Or my, my eyes aren't haughty. <laughs> My heart isn't lofty, and I just went with it. It wasn't, it has not been easy, and that was in October, and now it's about to be October. And it's like, this whole time has been just continuation of that, and him taking me further and deeper, and just because I need, because he's trying to prepare me, and that's the whole thing, mm. get ready. And I realized that what he meant by man of spoils is your plan was always college and then what I have for you. But that was your plan, really. And I was kind of like, but I'm still seeking you. Like, I want to go to college and I want to get in, plugged into ministries. And he's like, no, it's you, that's your plan. But this is my time. And time is of the essence. Jesus, Jesus came in and said, the time is now. So. Yeah. So, so jumped, something jumped in my spirit when you just said that, um, that I think is a word for somebody here this morning. And what she just said, when she said, I didn't want to be at peace with it. And I just need you to hear something right now. Sometimes we are so dysfunctional in our background and in our lives that we would rather the uncomfortable of the mess than the peace of God's will. That's a word for somebody because when she said it, my spirit just leapt. Right? And for those of us, and I am raising my hand in this one, for those of us who grew up in dysfunctional scenarios, we actually are more comfortable in chaos. The last four years. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. been chaos in your family, you know. And so, so you know, for, for some of us, and maybe most of us here today, I need you to hear that's something for us to work towards. That we can actually be okay when God brings his peace to something that we can actually sit still and rest in it as opposed to go chasing back after the chaos. Yeah. Amen? Oh, man. How, how did you, how did you, because here's the question that especially young people, but um, us old folks would like to hear too, those of us who didn't hear the noise. Um, how, how did you hear God's voice? Like, how would you describe hearing his voice? Primarily through the word. Okay. Um, it's his word. Like, if you want to talk to him, open it up. Because it's, it's not like he didn't speak it into existence. And it's living and breathing. Um, so my sophomore year, I read the Bible chronologically. I did it in a year. And so after that, I was like, well, I'm done. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I don't know, like, <laughs> I'm a full Christian. Yeah. It's all done. I, get, I kept telling my youth pastor. I was like, I'm done. I get to go to heaven now. <laughs> Um, but it's hard. It's hard to know where to go and what to do. So I, I really like, you really made me love Bible history, for sure. And because the Old Testament is where my heart is. It was just really we had a lot strange. of fun in children's yeah. church. Yeah. <laughs> the bear, he, he used to um, <laughs> threaten us with the bear coming after us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you know that story? There's a story in the Bible. There's a prophet. And he's bald, right? And I used to tell this to the kids, like, sue me, I don't care. But look, I used to tell this to the kids because what happened is that he comes out and he's bald and all these little kids start mocking and making fun of him. And he, he it, this, this is the word, this is word, it's not Mike. And he prays like a prayer of almost like damnation on them. Yeah, yeah, and does. bears come out and eat the children. It's in your Bible. Yeah. So... That's so I used to saying. tell him that. That's that was that was kind of a Mike disciplinary thing for children's yeah. church. Yeah. But I loved, but it made me love the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went um, through 
a study of David. Um, and that's where like, I felt, and I didn't do it for a long time, I felt the pull of like, you should probably look into this. And if you feel like a pull like that, then that's God's voice. Like he, he yeah. moves through your spirit and through circumstances. Like people are gonna start talking about it and reminding you of, oh, like I felt like I should do this. So I went through a study of David and, and it was all about heart, like mm-hmm. to have David's heart written. Like you mm-hmm. can do more than one thing. David was a king, he was a worship leader, he was a military captain. Right. You can do a shepherd, you can do more than one thing. And just as much as God was David's inheritance is what he talks about through the Psalms, mm-hmm. David was God's inheritance. Like to find, you find your worth in the word. You find, That's right. like if you want to know who you are, look in the word because he'll tell you flat out. Um, so the word was the, my stronghold. Um, and then through circumstances, like things are, if things need to fall apart, they're going to fall apart. And if things need to come together, they're going to come together like this. Like if I think about all the things that had to happen to, for me to be on the stage. Get to this moment. Yeah. It's, I'm dumbfounded. Me, Me too. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, when I look at the whole process of now launching the church and the whole, you know, the reality of us having to go through trials, struggles, victories, failures. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to us about um, struggles in understanding God's voice. Um, Sometimes I feel like I'm just dumb. (laughs) Anybody else? Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Okay. And it's not of a, it's clear. It's not like God doesn't speak clearly. He just isn't communicating in a timeline like we think. Um, so it's not so much of not being able to understand, more of being confused and like imp- impatient. Because um, everything he said, I understood. And to an extent, like at some point, like manna, it came through. You know, it wasn't exactly when I wanted it to, but... But a while but, later. But a while but later, it took some I, time, I time to understand. Yeah. yeah. And, um... But it's hard to accept what God's saying. Like, and that's where it's important to know how God wants your heart to look. And that's where you find it in the Word. Mm. Um, and then you can accept and embrace that Word. Right. Of, like, if my heart's not in it or not willing, then I'm not going to... I'm, it's not that I'm not going to hear it. It's I'm going to choose not to hear it. Or I'm going to bl- put the blindfolds up, and I'm not. Um, so it's all about your heart. Of It's it's really easy to talk to God, but it's really hard to listen. Um, hmm. That's so good. Yeah. Say that again. Say that again. It's really easy to talk to God, but it's really hard to listen. Come on, somebody. Right? And I think the reality being that because oftentimes he's not saying what we want him yes, to say. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right? You have to be able to accept what right. you don't want to hear. Yeah. God, I want you to do this. And he says, no, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. And we go, I don't think you heard me. Yeah. I want you to do this. <laughs> right? I mean, the reality of the struggle of understanding and hearing God's voice and, and all of that. And um, man, I'm so, I'm so grateful for what God is doing in her life and, and watching, the, watching the struggle. Like that, that, when the verse says, take joy in the trials, like we, we struggle so much with that. And yet the reality of being, you know, once we get there and, and what I need you to hear, what so many of need you to hear, and, and I'm going to give you three little points for us to close out today. But, but I think what we really need to hear in Raylan's story that I really heard is how long it took, Right. How long it took from that moment. And when you think about from the time David had, uh, had, uh, had you know, his, his visions of what was going to be, right? From the time he was told a king till he actually became a king. Joseph, from the time he had his dream to the time that was fulfilled. I think that was 22 years. You, you know, some of us, like, we just need to get a little longevity to us. Right? I mean, because when I, when I hear of a, of a sophomore getting a word... And then holding on and wrestling for it for a year. You know, how many times do we pick up the Bible and go, well, I don't understand it. I don't know. And walk away because we don't understand. For those of you who are new to Christianity and new to the word, don't get frustrated because you don't understand. God's got you in a process. We need to seek 
him in that. So here's, here's what I'm really excited about to, to say that Raylan doesn't know this part that I'm going to tell her this morning, but um, you're go, tell us where you're going. So I'm going to Toowoomba, Australia. Toowoomba. Toowoomba. That's just fun. Everybody say Toowoomba. Good. Don't hold me to it. I'm just guessing. That's the <laughs> That's what you think it's supposed to be. I've heard people say it, and it sounds similar. So yeah. Okay. okay. I'm pretty sure it's right. Right. And so you're going there. Tell us what you're doing um, with YWAM. With YWAM, it's a music and worship DTS. Um, we're doing everything, anything you can think of. Like people ask me to get specific, and I say I can't because I'm not there yet. Um, and but they have this huge list. It's like a mile long of this is all the things that we could be doing, and it's from building wells to going into prison ministries to working with children to there's you name it. We're gonna we're gonna at least touch on it. So we have um, lecture phase for like the first three months, and on our base in Toowoomba, combined with the local outreach in Toowoomba. Um, and then we get sent out for outreach, like the full, another three months. Um, and then we come back, and I don't know where out. I don't know where I'm going yet. Um, and then we come back and we record an album. Yeah. Isn't that cool? So, so in what, eight months or so, we'll be able to listen to an album that your DTS records. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Seven. seven months, seven months, right, in this scenario. So, so here's, here's what's really cool. So, God put it on the heart of, of a few people here, and then we put out the video for Raylan, um, and some of you guys saw us put out the video, and you've given to help with that scenario. So we, uh, we told Raylan, we were like, how much do you have left to do this whole trip? And, uh, and she kind of looked at me wide-eyed, because... I would cry all the time. It's, it's, qu- it's quite a bit. It's frustrating, right? Right? And so here's another thing. You know, here's a scenario where um, she's heard God's voice. She's following what God's told her to do, and yet the provision isn't there. Come on, somebody. Anybody else? Anybody else? You had something going on, but you're going, I, I don't know. And then uh, she walked into Church of the Lakes a few weeks ago, and uh, God put it on the heart of a couple of our people and on us. And so we looked at Raylan and we said, Raylan, you need to come share your story with our church. And then we're going to figure out how to take care of the rest of all your expenses for this trip. And so what she doesn't know that I'm excited about, we've already, we, we paid for her plane ticket. So we bought her plane ticket to the other side of the, the universe. Like, it's so long. How long is the flight? 29 hours Tw- in the air. 29 hours in the air, right? So we've already bought her plane ticket. And then she also has... Um, uh, quite a bit of expenses. And when they do the outreach phase, they don't know where they're going. So they tell them, you need between $1,000 and $3,000 because they have no idea. Because they might get the message, we're supposed to fly to China and do this or Canada or what. I mean, they could literally be anywhere on the globe type of deal. So we have... Um, we have put together with people giving and all, we've put together not only enough funds to cover all of your expenses, so all that, we're all set, including the full $3,000 for your outreach. But also, also, here's what I want to do. Um, we want to go beyond that. We want to go a step above. I'm a cry baby. Because um, I, I want us as a church to kind of be on this experience with you. And this journey of hearing God's voice. And I so appreciate her real and her honesty, right? Like, we, what we didn't hear today was, oh, it's God just spoke to me and it was perfect and wonderful, right? We didn't hear that, which is exactly the journey. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, above and beyond your expenses, we're going to give you about $1,200 extra. That what I want you to do is we want you to take that to your team. And when you go to do your outreach, I want you to hear God's voice. How does that money get invested wherever it is that God, and then you're going to send us a video, right, and tell us how God used that money and how God used money that Church of the Lakes has given to you uh, to bless whoever it is somewhere on the planet. Got it? So we have, we have $5,800 put aside that's just yours, that as we need to pay expenses, we'll pay that sort of stuff, and then we're going to give you those funds and have those funds ready so whenever God tells you how that money's supposed to be used, we can be a part of this journey with you. Okay? Thank you, church. Thank you for what you do and your giving. I'm not going to be able to talk anymore. She, not, she said, I'm not going to be able to talk anymore. All right, let me talk. How about that? Let me close this out. Let me give you three points that I took because I gave those three questions to Raylan and had her write them to me on paper. And then I took some things out of it. So Raylan built this sermon. I just pulled it out of her stuff, okay? So if you want to hear God's voice, does anybody here want to hear God's voice? 
Anybody here want to know what it is that God wants you to do and, and how he wants to fulfill your purpose and all those things? Number one, number one, come on. We heard it in her story. Read his word. Come on now. Listen, I think this particular number one, it's for us that have been in the church long enough. Come on, it's the Charlie Brown teacher. Wah, 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 wah. Right? Because we are trained by this culture that there's always new, better, best, mon- you know, like, do we even have small anymore? I don't think we have small anymore. We have medium, large, mega, mondo, grande, latte. I mean, you understand what I mean? Like, our culture is telling us more, bigger, better, different. Like, we're always looking for the newest, coolest devotional app, right? Faster, yes. And I need you to hear something. That's not how it works with God. It is always going to be about going back to his word. Always. And I challenge you. I know it takes work. I know some of you struggle to understand it. But did you just hear her? She read it and didn't understand it. But she continued to seek. And God gave her that answer. Right? And God will do that for you. If you know nothing about the Bible and you read it and you're reading these weird things about circumcision and, you know, this one begat this one and, and I mean, all kinds of weird stuff and bears, children, eating children. Right? Listen, listen, listen. When you read it, you may not understand it, but if you will seek, if you will stay diligent, God will meet you in that place, I promise. That is how you're going to hear God's word. So a couple simple thoughts for those of you who have never read before. Proverbs, there's 31 Proverbs. In most days of the month, there's 31 days in the month. Read whatever chapter of Proverbs connects to that day. What's today's date? I forgot already. 28th, read the 28th Proverb today. 29th, thank you very much. Or read yesterday's, like I was trying to say before I was interrupted. But... Just kidding. Um, but no, but seriously, so read, like read whatever the day. I do the one-year Bible, um, and so that, it sets it up for you. I'll tell you one that I just, even because of this message, I'll just tell you, my wife, I just started it, and it's read the entire Bible in 90 days, but I've got it on an app, and so it takes an hour and six minutes every day for me to listen through that, that I'm working on and trying to do that scenario. Psalm 119, 147 says, I rise before dawn and I cry for help. Let me ask you, who are you crying to help to? Because if we're doing peer-to-peer mentoring, we're not going to get anywhere. You got to find somebody wiser, but the wisest is already in the book. It's already there for us to reach towards, right? And let me remind you, we have really amped up what we're doing in Right Now Media. For those of you who haven't gotten on Right Now Media, get on the website. There's a place to sign up on our website. There's a tab on our website that says Right Now Media on the homepage and sign up because what I'm doing is now I am putting weekly suggestions every week of of studies you can do during the week to follow up what we've talked about. So I put two on there for you this week. One is by Dallas Willard, which is the, the quote I gave you at the beginning that's called Hearing His Voice. And another one's by Pete Briscoe. It's two teachings. I think they are amazing, but it is hearing the Holy Spirit's voice. They're both sitting on there on the Church of the Lake page under weekly suggestions. So follow up and get in his word. If you don't know how to do that, then, then, then please call me. Please let us help you in that process. You are not going to hear God's word. I mean, God's voice unless you get in his word, right? Number two, what I picked out of, of, of Raylan's story. Number two is you got to cultivate his presence. What I heard that was so fun, it's so much fun because I almost feel like a dad, you know, in, in a way. Because um, she, she and Christina are the same age and, and we're at school together and what rhymes? That was a hundred years ago. And, um, but, but, but when I, when I hear her story, what I hear is someone really seeking, right? Someone saying, I didn't understand, or I was frustrated, or even when God told me that I still turn around and went, I don't like that. I want something different. Or now I feel peace and I don't want peace. I want to exit, right? Th- th- listen, just like you, you have to cultivate God's presence. You have to put yourself in positions to hear God's voice. God and your relationship with him is not a lottery. It's not just going to happen. You you don't buy a ticket and get your destiny fulfilled, 
right? You seek every day. I get up and I read his word and I seek and I'm confused and I cry and I'm frustrated and I'm angry and I go, God, you don't know what you're talking about. And, and listen, it's a relationship, y'all, but you've got to cultivate God's presence. God shows up in prepared environments. Are you a prepared environment? Is your soul a prepared environment? Because the creator of the universe is ready to show up. He just needs a prepared environment to show up in. Because he knows if he shows up and you're not prepared, you're not going to hear it correctly. You're, you're going to hear it skewed or you're going to mess it up because you're not going to receive it in the full way. Worship, listen to me, is a prepared environment. For some of us, we need to learn to worship a little more. We need to turn some music on and do that. John 4, I'm, he's seeking worshipers, right? It's amazing how fired up we can get about a football game. Seminoles won, y'all. Come on, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord, yeah, right? It's amazing how fired I can get up about a football game, but last I checked, Willie Taggart is not preparing a place for me. For you Florida fans, Dan Mullen is not preparing a place for you. Amen. Matter of fact, if you watch some both of them play, you might not think neither one of them are preparing much at all. But <laughs> Jesus is preparing a place for you. Yes, he deserves our attention as much as a bunch of sweaty men running around throwing a ball around. Yes, right? Genesis 3 and 8, they heard the sound of the Lord. Listen to this. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid couple things. One is, are you hiding from God because of the regret, sin, struggles, because of an unprepared environment? But the other is the beginning of that. They knew what God sounded like. That doesn't just happen. That's cultivated. It's cultivated for me to be able to go, ooh, that's God, right? Even, even in Raylan's story, she didn't immediately go, oh, that's God's voice, right? She was still in the process of cultivating her soul to be a prepared place where when God's voice speaks, we go, oh yeah, that's it. Because there's so many voices coming at us all the time, right? I've got to have a prepared environment. It's got to be a preparation of my soul. Number three, and I'm going to close. Number three is, uh, by the way, those of you who are getting baptized, you can go change now because I'm going to close in just a minute. So if you're getting baptized and you need to change, women's restroom is right there, men's right there. We're really excited to have a few that are doing that today. Um, absolutely, you can, give a, you can give a little hand for that. Um, yeah, yeah, well, you, the band, you guys can come on up as I close out in this last point. I appreciate that. Number three, and this sounds completely self-serving. Lyrics on the run. Listen to me, this sounds completely self-serving unless you put it in the right context. Number three is, get planted in the church. Get planted in the church. You know what I heard from Raylan's story? Every time she said she felt like God was talking to her or this and that, she was on a retreat. She was serving in the church. She was on the worship team. She was doing, do you understand what I'm saying? Listen to the verse, Psalm 92. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. Now I'm preaching to the choir because you're here this morning. But let me say this. Are you here every Sunday? And, and, I, and I don't mean that to be a condemnation thing or anything else. What I'm saying to you is I need to hear God's word every week in the corporate setting. And you need to hear God's word every week in the corporate setting. You need a place for you to get planted if you're going to hear God's voice. Because what happened was God used an amazing youth pastor in her life. Right? No, I'm talking about the guy, Justin. Justin, right? I'm talking about Justin. I'm not talking about me. I was her children's pastor, right? No. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thanks for that. Anyway, no, but listen to me, because they have a phenomenal program going on over, out there, right, at their church. I mean, these kids are a product, so they're doing something right, right? Used, used that scenario, and in a church, this, this is good, thought of this last night. In a church, 
that you didn't agree with completely doctrinally. Right? Whoa, 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 time out. I got to talk about this. Because it's not about us finding a church that is perfect in our mind and perfect in our eyes and the way we think it should be and that lines up perfectly doctrinally with us. Some of us need to be in a church that is a little off from us. Why? Because we need to learn humility. Because we need to learn the reality of what it means to submit to authority. And so what I see in Raylan's story is serving for years. How many years were you there? A lot. Five years? Five years. Serving five years in a church that she didn't totally agree with doctrinally and had some struggles with. A lot, a lot of struggles with, right? Listen, listen. Hear that. Hear that. Stop running church to church and look for the best, looking for the best church that fits you and what you like. Right? Stop running church to church and say, well, I don't think my gifts are being used. Listen to me. Your gift will make room for you. That's scripture. Plug in and serve if it's scrubbing toilets and see what God might do to someone who would humble themselves enough to say it's not about me. That's how you hear God's voice. Right? You understand? That's how you, if you want the right fruit, you got to get in the right environment. Put it to the test. I challenge it to you this way. Give it a year, whether it be here at Church of the Lakes, Father's House, First Baptist, Warehouse Church. I don't care. I don't, I, I don't care. I really don't. Frontier is a great church. I just saw some Frontier people that are here. All right? So, so listen, listen, listen to me. Go and plug into that church and give it your all like Raylan did, even in a church that she wasn't totally jiving with on everything, right? But serve your butt off. And see, just test if God is bigger than a denomination or bigger than an argument about doctrine or bigger than any pastor or some little feud or what color the carpet is or if the music's too loud or how about some hymns or whatever argument we all have. Come on, y'all. When does the church decide that we're going to be tough? That we're going we're gonna to step in and go, I'm going to serve when it kind of stinks. My wife, my wife's the one that brought this up to me. I didn't even notice this, but she said, you know, we've taught forever that the tingles when you're in a relationship, when you first have a relationship and you have the tingles, you know, the tingles and, and, and you're like, you can't stop touching each other. Like you're sitting next to each other and you you got to touch knees because it's like the Velcro stage. <laughs> the tingles, this is researched, last about two or three years. Then the tingles go away. Guess how old, old our church is? A little over two years. So when the tingles go away, who are we? When the tingles go away, when we are planted somewhere, whether it be here or any other of the great churches that are around here for us to serve. And so I want to challenge you. I'm so grateful for Redden's story, but I want to challenge you pulling those things out. You, you got to read your Bible. You've got to open God's word. You have to cultivate his presence. You have to have a prepared environment for him to speak in. And I think you've got to be in a body of believers that bring accountability and do that in your life. And you've got to push through any message of the devil that would come that is a lie from the depths of the hell opposite of those realities. As much as I cannot wait to see what God's going to do with this life, I want the same thing for you. I want you to hear God's voice. I want you to struggle. I want you to question. And I want you to persevere and find that place where we can celebrate what it is that God's doing in your life. Amen? Let me pray for you this morning in that. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for Raylan and her story. I, I thank you so much for her struggle because it's made her the young woman she is today. I thank you for this adventure you have in front of her. And we pray blessing. We pray your protection and safety upon her. God, we send her out. We commission her as, as if she were our own here at Church of the Lakes. But we know there's a lot of people, a lot of churches that have invested to make this life what it is. So we're just glad to be partners. But we commission her today. 
and we support her not only with our finances, but with our prayers and our excitement to hear what it is that you're going to do uh, with all the funds that are given and all the opportunities you have. I pray over that worship album, God. Would you bring forth new great songs that draw people close to you, that bring glory and honor to you, God? And God, I pray for us here today. Would we push in to hear your word, your still small voice? Help us to be diligent and get in your word. To find times of worship to prepare the environment for you to come. And to get planted in your house. That we might serve you, fulfill what you've called us to do. And hear you guiding us each and every step of the way. With your eyes still closed and your head still bowed, I just want to pray. Would you take a minute and say, God, I want to hear your voice. Would you take a minute and think about these points and ask yourself, where is it that I need to to work? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you in the idea of reading your word, cultivating his presence or getting planted in the church? How is it that you need to walk that through and walk that out? And if there's anybody here and you don't know Jesus today, I just need you to hear something. It's just as easy as asking him to come into your life and surrender your heart to him. It's the greatest decision you could ever make. And if that's you today, it's just as simple as praying something like this. Jesus, I give you my all today. I, I, I want to I live for you. I want to know what my purpose and meaning is. Thank you for forgiving me for all my sins. And as best as I understand, I'm going to begin to serve you and do what you've called me to do and fulfill my purpose of why I was created. We thank you, God, for all of this. We pray all this in the one and only name that answers it all. In the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.